This is Duke University. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on this festive evening. It feels to me as though the Franklin Humanities Institute has been waiting since its inception to celebrate the humanities literary acumen of a scholar president like Dick Broadhead. He is a proponent, as you will note from his address to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, of literature as life. Who wouldn't want to be in the company of a president who forsaking all pieties, pledged in his inaugural address to forsake all other academic loyalties and, quote, take you, Duke, to be my chosen life. Accused as he was by his legions of devotees in New Haven when they heard of his move south of leaving Yale for someone younger and more athletic. <laughs> of the task of a president, you are not required to complete the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. Listen to those words again. They are in Dick's first major speech to the university, in his inaugural address. You are not required to complete the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. Who do you think those words address? All of us, of course, in one of those many, many moments in which the book reveals the coming together of the president and the English professor, or more precisely, reveals a president who not only spoke of and for the humanities, but who has stewarded the university through a living engagement with the humanities. I especially like the subtitle, Meeting the 21st Century University. For Dick, and Duke have defined what a great university can be in the 21st century. Thanks to Dick's vision of the enduring and encompassing value of the humanities and the liberal arts more generally, the more important developments in Kunshan over the next several years will not be the iPhone 8 or iPhone 9, but instead a university founded in the belief that there is more to education than can be measured in iPhones an education that stresses the values that make for a strong and harmonious human community are more important than ever before. Reading speaking of Duke, I was struck time and time again by those intermittent points when President Broadhead paused and made a personal aside that reminded the audience that rather than being lectured, they were colloquially being brought into a grand conversation of great consequences by someone who intuitively understood his role, not only as a designated leader and spokesperson, but as a feeling and thinking person amongst others. Indeed, the recurring element throughout speaking of Duke leading the 21st century university is President Broadhead's professorial poise, his unapologetic love of literature, and their shared utility in helping to address the educational and administrative challenges that Duke has faced. Dick has indeed led a 21st century university. I have heard Dick speak on many occasions. We all know he doesn't read from notes. Though his eloquence, wit, and powers of articulation are legendary, his words always seem extempore, as if he's just now thought of them. No, but really, I, who speaks like that? <laughs> he can't. He can't simply just have thought about them. This is the Broadhead phenomenon. Dick speaks with the same care and thought to the middle school spelling beers uh, as to the assembled ranks of the great and the good in other locales and on other occasions. He speaks of Duke, he speaks with it, and he speaks to it. He speaks to us. <laughs> This book is about you. Dick's favorite locution is indeed the second person. The point is we, whoever we are on any particular occasion, are in the picture. 
This is a faculty book watch. It's not a valediction or a vote of thanks, but please forgive me for saying, Dick, I will miss you as my president. Dick and Cindy, I look forward to being friends, neighbours, colleagues, fellow professors in the time to come as you both continue to walk 10,000 miles, read 10,000 books. The liberal arts for me isn't about having one half cup of humanities and one half cup of social sciences and one good cup of uh, the, the sciences. It's about a spirit of inquiry. What we call research, that's inquiry. It's the, the shared uh, progress of using as much communal intelligence as you can to, uh, to go from what you currently understand to what you might eventually understand. But we live in a country where education is more needed than ever, and the impoverishment of, our, of, of public understanding of why it's valuable uh, has grown decade by decade by decade. That's where I sort of felt my calling in this work, to the extent that I've felt myself as a public speaker, uh, is just to go out there and as many places as will invite you, just try to explain why is a short-term education less good for you than a long-term education? Uh, why is something uh, that develops the fullness of your powers better for you than something that develops the narrowness of your powers. Uh, and I still think, I'd, I'd have to say, I think, I think that there is so much work to be done that if every president spent all day long doing this, uh, you, you'd really never, you, 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 you'd, you'd have to hope to begin to make a dent in it. Why don't presidents of universities speak out more on public issues? What business does the president have voicing his or her personal politics about things? Uh, I've thought uh, that actually the president's obligation is to create the place where all kinds of views can be uh, uh, can be active, voiced, and interchanged. And so it's not the job of the president to say what views are officially valued here. We've all spoken out about the immigration issues recently and uh, the immigration ban, uh, not because it's a political issue, but because it's one that touches fundamentally on the enabling conditions of the university. It's all, it's all good. I don't know. I, you know, and, and just to tell you the truth, there was a moment when you also thought, how frank do you want this book to be? And so at a certain point, I opened it to include things that were controversial that one might have left out. And I even opened it to include something comical that might have been left out. Bill, you said something that I found amusing, and I wonder if I'm the only one who did, which is you kept using the name Duke and the name Dick in very close proximity to each other. <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, I find this a very funny thing. There are these things periodically called vowel shifts, uh, in which vowels, you know, why why is the word ham, the medieval, right, the medieval word, so Tottenham, Twickenham, all of those, that's the same word as home, but the vowel has shifted. Uh, and so over some period of time, it's possible that I will be known as Duke Broadhead. <laughs> or, even more astonishingly, that this will be called Dick University. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.